Good day there, once again viewers, Kamikaze78 here, coming to you guys with some more Titanfall 2 content. Today folks, we're going to be reviving an old series that I used to run on this channel known as the Quartermaster's Overview, a series that was dedicated to giving brief overviews of the weaponry in Planet Side 2, only this time around we're going to be applying the same vision and concept of the Quartermaster's Overview to Titanfall 2. Today we're going to be taking a look at the assault rifles available to players in the multiplayer, we're going to be doing a brief rundown of each of the weapon's characteristics, and then immediately follow up with some tips and tricks on how to use each of the weapons. By the end of the video, you will hopefully have a better understanding of how each of the assault rifles performs on their own, as well as in comparison to their counterparts. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. The R201 Carbine is about as standard issue as it gets when it comes to the assault rifles available in Titanfall 2. If you're looking for a weapon that is well rounded and capable of holding its own in just about any situation that you're going to be presented with in an average game, then this is going to be the weapon for you. Sporting an admirable rate of fire, which is also the fastest of the assault rifle lineup, a controllable recoil pattern, and a hip fire accuracy that is quite serviceable when caught in a pickle in close quarters combat. However, the weapon does feature the lowest damage per round in the assault rifle family, and going full auto at range will see you lose control of the weapon pretty quickly. This is most definitely the more reliable assault rifle of the bunch for CQC, and is easily the most forgiving weapon for those who didn't quite nail the perfect score on the target practice in pilot training. With that said, however, this weapon's adaptability and forgiving nature also serves as a weakness to a certain extent, in the sense that if you ever find yourself in an engagement with a weapon that is particularly designed for that range, then you're going to find yourself considerably outgunned. You must remember that this is a jack-of-all-trades weapon, and in turn, recognizing when you're outgunned is a key skill to master. Something else that you need to remember is that while this weapon may have a decent hip fire, it is not an SMG and therefore you should avoid using the hip fire primarily at all costs. And for the love of god, don't do anything stupid like putting the run and gun perk on this weapon. Trust me guys, I've tried it and it does not work. While this weapon does have a decent hip fire for CQC pinches, it's not great for using it primarily. Stick to aiming down sights whenever you can. With the R201, you have the ability to be unpredictable and competitive in many situations. Keep it that way and you'll be a force to be reckoned with. Now moving on, we arrive at one of the most specialist, yet by the same token, popular weapons on the frontier among pilots, the Hemlock BFR. This three round burst fire rifle promises to deliver devastating blows against any enemy that is unfortunate enough to wander into this weapon's crosshairs with extreme prejudice, as a well placed shot can easily knock a pilot out of the picture before even giving them a chance to react. Throw amped weapons into the equation and... Well, pilots tend to turn into a red sticky paste rather quickly. This is a weapon that lands on the complete opposite side of the spectrum against the R201 when it comes to forgiveness. If you miss a burst with this weapon in a 1v1 engagement, you are going to quickly find yourself on the short end of the stick. This also makes the weapon very dangerous to use in close quarters, and for the love of god, avoid hip firing it at all costs, whenever you can. Relying on this weapon's hip fire is kind of like relying on a newborn to write an essay, it's just not going to happen at all. Now as far as some tips go for using the weapon, I'm sure you've all seen the in-game tip that says that you should aim for the center mass of your target to land all three hits of your burst. And as far as in-game tips go, and trust me I've seen some pretty crummy ones in my time, that has to be one of the most accurate in-game tips that I've ever seen to date. And believe me, it is so damn tempting to go for those headshots. Trust me, I know. But aiming for the center mass actually means that the first two shots will land on the upper middle body of your target, and the third and final shot will land on the head to deal a quick and easy end to your enemy. The natural vertical recoil of this weapon is actually enough to kick up into the head if you aim for the upper middle body, which is absolutely fantastic, and if you can land all three shots there, including two in the middle body, 
body and one on the head, it's going to be a kill pretty bloody quickly. Oversampling is also something that you really need to avoid here with this weapon, and when I say that, I mean pulling the trigger in an attempt to get the weapon to fire another burst before it is actually ready to fire in the first place. When you do this, all you do is slow down your actual rate of fire incredibly, which is not really that great as you can gather for when you're caught out in a CQC battle. This weapon is all about patience and precision. If you take that with you into battle, then you will be much better off with this weapon and you will have a damn well great time. Ah, the G2. The G2 is what would happen if an assault rifle and a sniper rifle met on the frontier version of Tinder, have a swell first date, go back to someone's house, get up to drunken shenanigans, and then proceed to regret everything the next day. This is the go-to long-range weapon for those who like to have the luxury of being able to choose when they fire each and every round, and this is a weapon that rewards said precision with its vicious damage output at long range. Hitting a target in the head will quickly reduce this weapon bullet to kill down to two, giving enemy pilots very little time to react if your aim is on point. And to a certain extent, I would even argue that this weapon is a little bit more forgiving than the hemlock if you miss a shot with it, only because with the hemlock, if your aim is off, then you kind of have to wait three shots before you can try again. Realigning mid-burst is quite difficult, whereas with the G2, missing a shot can be quickly corrected with a follow-up shot. And while this weapon's fire rate isn't quite as fast as you can click the mouse realistically, it is pretty damn high, making it very easy to make up for lost time. Still, doesn't mean you should hip fire with the weapon, avoid that shit like the plague. However, in order to make sure that you don't miss your shots, I would definitely recommend taking the threat optics with you into battle as it gives you that added clarity that you need to land those shots consistently. The G2 is a weapon that just loves to take a trip back down memory lane, you know? Back down to the basics of a semi-automatic weapon that promises to hit something with all the force you could want and not do a whole lot more. It's just a simple weapon that does its job. No fancy tricks, which is why the G2 holds a very special place in my heart. It might not be the most efficient weapon with all the SMGs and fully automatics running around, but it's still effective in its own way when used right, and is just plain old fun. <laughs> And last, but certainly not least, we arrive at the Flatline Assault Rifle, the R201's cousin that made a few trips to the gym for some serious strength training. Or, you could really consider this weapon to be the big brother of the alternator SMG. The Flatline is a fully automatic assault rifle that favours damage over rate of fire, making it the weapon that acts as the gap filler between the Hemlock and the R201. It's a weapon that appreciates the mentality of quality over quantity more than the R201, but doesn't go as far as sending you straight back to the respawn screen if someone happens to close the gap on you. It's a weapon that's stuck between being somewhat versatile in all situations, with a bit more oomph per hit. This weapon is also unique in the sense that it has a recoil pattern that does not move up or even diagonally at all. The Flatline's recoil kicks exclusively to the left or to the right, which does sound quite incredible at first, doesn't it? Like the luxury of being able to fire a burst at a target with the weapon not jumping up above the target's head. That sounds all good and dandy, but horizontal recoil is actually much harder to control than vertical recoil. With the vertical recoil, all you need to do is pull down on the mouse. With horizontal left and right recoil, countering the random jitters to the left or to the right is downright impossible. So with that, you're going to want make sure that you keep your bursts controlled and short with this weapon as much as you can. Going full auto for too long, at range especially, will throw you completely out of whack, which ain't something you're going to want in the long run. And folks, with all that said, that's going to wrap up today's revival of the Quartermasters overview series for Titanfall 2. Now, guys, please, all the feedback in the world, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section down below. I'm of course experimenting with this series a bit, seeing how valid it is for Titanfall 2 over Planet Side. To. So do let me know, do you guys think this series works for this game? Do you think it doesn't work? What could be improved? What could be taken out? You know, what goes where? What shouldn't go there? You know guys, every little bit, every little bit of feedback is going to help with this video and every little bit is going to help with the future of the Quartermasters Overview series to see how we can improve it in the long run. If you guys enjoyed today's video, then a backhanding of that like button would be greatly appreciated. And if you guys found yourself backhanding that like button and you're new to the channel, why don't you go around and backhand that subscribe button? whilst you're at it to keep up to date with the content in which I'm releasing here. Once again guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I'll be seeing you all next time. Have a good one. Yeah.